this is Stacy Tamaki. I'd like to welcome you to the Tiny Gummy Studio. This class is sponsored by Paper Circle, the makers of Ogami Paper in Nelsonville, Ohio. If you'd like to learn more about Ogami, please visit the blog post that accompanies this video on Patreon. What is a Renzuru? A Renzuru is a paper crane that is connected to at least one other paper crane. So you could have anywhere from two to even a thousand cranes that are all folded from one single sheet of paper that is cut but still connected. Obviously the challenge there is folding without tearing those connection points. But even figuring out where to cut and then what direction to fold each model can be quite complicated. I, in the past, have tried folding other models, so adding a tiny frog to a paper crane, or here two frogs, is kind of a spin-off of what the traditional Renzurus are all about. This model is folded from a super thin sheet of Ogami and has 17 cranes all connected from it. I am going to include diagramming for all the models I've just shown you that shows both where I cut the paper and where the key points are, the head, the tail, the wings, so that you can follow those diagrams if you'd like to try to fold any of these models that I'm showing you here. But for the sake of this video, I decided to show you how to fold a four crane Renzuru with the wing tips connected. There are mostly tips about how to fold, but before I get into those, I wanted to just do a brief rundown on the type of paper that you are going to fold with. The best advice I can give you is to use a handmade paper. And the reason why is because Machine-made papers have a grain where all the fibers run in alignment to each other, which makes it very easy to tear along with the grain, but also means the paper will weaken along the grain. And so folding and unfolding or applying too much pressure to those connection points, the machine-made paper is going to tear more easily than a handmade paper. And the reason why is because handmade papers are made in a way that the grain is not aligned, it's random. And this increases what's called the tensile strength of the paper, meaning it's more resistant to tearing because the fibers crisscross each other. They're lying in all different directions. So there is no weakness to it, the way weakness is inherent to a machine-made paper. You can find many different types of handmade papers. Usually art stores will have them or specific paper stores will have them. They will usually cost more than uh, machine-made papers. But when you're folding for origami and you're, if you're cutting the paper down, you can make quite a few models out of a single sheet. So that's how I like to look at it. The nice thing about Ogami is they offer different sizes of papers. So you can buy a large sheet or you can buy smaller pieces. I folded several different ones in making this video and really enjoyed all of them. And that yellow paper in the 17 crane model was thinner than tissue paper and so incredibly strong. I was amazed and absolutely love it for folding in miniature. It's perfect, and I will definitely continue using it in the future. The folding tips, there are a few. The first is that I think the best practice is to lay in as much pre-creasing as you can before you cut the paper into the individual squares. It's not that you have to. I could have just cut this paper into four squares with the connection points along those outer edges, but it would mean I'd have to do 
all this individual folding of each square and try not to tear the paper. I actually folded Renzuru like that for many years before it finally dawned on me I could pre-fold a lot of the preliminary steps just to get me a little further ahead. It saves me time, it saves me stress, so that's how I do it now. It's also worth noting that this is not a video designed to teach you how to fold an origami crane. You really want to know how to fold a crane from memory before you undertake folding these multi-crane Renzuru pieces. Not that you couldn't do it that way, but it would be a lot more challenging and really serves no purpose, as far as I can see, to put yourself through that kind of stress. I already made a video that shows how to fold a paper crane a few months ago, so I will add that to the blog post on Patreon, along with the diagrams that show where to cut, where to leave connected, and what portion of each square is going to be, say, my head, or my tail, or the wingtips, so that you'll have some idea of how to fold the, the paper to create this particular model that I'm showing you here with the four cranes connected by the wingtips. Those diagrams will all be on the Patreon blog post. I'm also going to make a third diagram for each of the models that just dawned on me. I should do this for you. Um, I'm going to use a thin red line to show you what the pre-creased crease pattern should be before you cut the model into all the different sections. That way there'll be one diagram that shows where to cut one that shows the directions to fold everything in for your heads, tails, and wings to be in the right places. And the third will be the crease pattern with the red lines to show you how much you can do ahead before you begin cutting. Once I have the creasing laid in, then I use a metal edged ruler an X-Acto knife and a self-healing cutting mat. I will cut along the pre-folded crease lines, making sure not to cut through my connection points. They may vary from a sixteenth of an inch to say one eighth of an inch, depending on how large the paper is that I am working with. But I try to do that really carefully, leaving as little of a connection point as possible, so the end result looks more clean. I already have a video on YouTube that shows how to use the X-Acto, the metal edge ruler, and the self-healing cutting mat to cut down the origami paper um, before it was for making smaller pieces but it is, I think, the only way that you can appropriately cut the paper to make the renzuru. So I'll add it to the blog post as well. The only other folding tip that I'd like to share is that I have over time discovered my favorite way to do this is to fold several steps in batches. You could fold each crane individually and kind of go around the model and complete it that way. But I have found over time that trying to keep them about the same size is, and shape is what makes it easier for me. That's subjective. You may decide to do it differently. But I batch those first few steps to the point of doing the squash fold at the beginning of the crane. And I will do that to each section until I have four squashed squares. And this is the only tricky part to me of the process. The, the rest is just having to take the time to go slowly and make sure you're placing your creases in the appropriate places and carefully shifting other paper out of the way so you can see what you're doing. 
but in this particular section when I'm folding these squashed folds it's very easy for the paper to somehow become twisted and you'll know it's twisted when after you folded all four squashed squares one or two of them are going in an opposite direction of the rest of them and if that happens then you have to look at the connection points very carefully and figure out which way do you need to spin that model to straighten it out and take that kink out of the paper and align it with the other squares because ideally all four squares should be able to lie flat in your hand with two on the bottom and two a layer of two on top all lying perfectly flat after i finish speaking here I'm going to adjust the speed and the rest of the video will be at a faster speed. Now, those of you who know YouTube know you can slow that down, but if you're like me and for whatever reason, right, you just were too busy to be on YouTube or you didn't have a good enough Wi-Fi connection to be able to be on YouTube or it just seemed really intimidating and you didn't know where to start with it. Um, you may not realize, as I didn't until last December, that you can adjust the playback speed of YouTube videos. Who knew? And the way you do that is on your desktop computer, you can look for this white gear in the lower right corner and click on it. And on my phone, I just have to touch my screen over the video itself and the white gear appears up here on the right hand corner of my phone. I click on that and it opens to a, a panel of things that I can adjust, one of them being speed. So say you want to follow along and fold this exact Renzuru as I fold it, you can then choose to slow the playback down so that you can follow along. And conversely, if you're ever watching a video and it's going too slow, yeah, you know, you can speed it up, move it along. Uh, the only drawback to that is I am going to drop in some music. And if you slow the video down, the music's going to sound really weird. So you might want to mute your sound at that point. But if you have any questions about folding a Renzuru, please feel free to leave them either in the YouTube comments or in the Patreon comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I would definitely encourage people to try folding one if you never have. They're really sweet and they're, they're kind of fun. They're great to give as gifts. People are always quite delighted and tickled when you hand it to them and explain to them that these are folded from a single sheet of paper. You'll amaze them and maybe you'll amaze yourself when you make your first one. Thank you for stopping by the studio. Stay creative. Keep folding. Bye.